rest of the night about growth hacking, and I'm pleased to welcome Vincent and his super fly shoes. How about a big round of applause? Woo! All right, I'm here. This is my first ever evening in Jersey. I've never been in Jersey before. This is date number 51 of my 65-day American tour. So it's real nice to be here. Um, I've only got 45 minutes, and I'm trying to gonna give you 45 minutes plus one day's worth of content. So get ready to take notes. Uh, by a show of hands, how many people here run their own company? And how many people want to run their own company? And how many people have a massive marketing budget to grow it? <laughs> Not even one in Jersey. Um, I know what it's like to want to grow a large company and have no money to do it. Three years ago, I was on welfare and housing benefit um, with absolutely no money when I started Planet Ivy, my first online magazine. So I know what it's like to have to ask for money for your parents, to have very little to go around, and to want to be able to do big things with your company. So I accidentally discovered this thing called growth hacking, um, and it enables you to do a hell of a lot with a hell of a little. So um, from that point three years ago, uh, I was given a check for a quarter million dollars to start Planet Ivy, my first online magazine, from zero to 300,000 visitors a month within six months. We then launched a second site, Screen Robot, after we got Planet Ivy to a million visitors a month. Screen Robot got to a million visitors a month in 100 days. We then got into the Techstars Accelerator, ahead of 1,500 other companies. We then launched our own agency, Magnific. I've launched my own conference company, Secret Source Conference. I've been featured in Inc. and TechCrunch. I've written for the likes of Huffington Post and Tech City News. A version of this talk was voted Best Talk at South by Southwest V2V. Content my team's written has been seen by over 50 million people, over 150 million page views. Uh, my own network has 200,000 likes and followers, over 50,000 followers for our clients in the last three months, and thousands of signups. So we get the first 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 people interested in projects. So we take magazines from zero to 50,000 visitors a month. We grow people's social communities. We take apps from zero to 100, 200 downloads a day. And we train companies how to do social media, how to get more traffic. And this is me with Tony Hawk um, at a conference in Dublin where I was starting out with Planet Ivy when I was a little bit smarter. This is Prince Andrew, the sixth in line to the throne of the royal family in the UK. So I helped some of his teams out with his Pitch at Palace competition, which was helping young companies get traffic to the competition he was running. So he invited me to St. James's Palace, one of the poshest buildings in the UK. I met his daughter there, Princess Beatrice. She's famous for wearing a big hat to a wedding. I told her about what I was working on and she asked for my business card, but she has not emailed me yet. <laughs> it's been six months. Um, this is me on the cover of Disrupt magazine. So um, everything runs to a system and every system can be beaten. If you want to be on the cover of a magazine, do what I did. Go and meet the editor and say, I want to be on the cover of your magazine. He'll say, who are you? I told him. I said, I'll also get five or six people who run massive companies to write articles for your magazine. So if you guest edit someone else's magazine, there's a much better chance they'll put you on the cover. Um, so I um, almost finished the third leg of this American tour, uh, coast to coast, Los Angeles, New York, South by Southwest, and doing some conferences later this year. Um, so San Francisco, New York, uh, you for Utah. We should do a photo at the end um, before we go. Right. This is my book, Secret Source, a step-by-step -step guide to growth hacking. Uh, so every channel, social media, content marketing, SEO, building a perfect landing page, uh, we go through every channel because uh, the book doesn't exist right now. There's pretty much no good books for practical growth hacking in the web 3.0 age. So it's out now on Indiegogo, has raised like $85,000 uh, in the first three months. I'll go into more of it in a sec. So firstly, you guys are totally fucked. I mean, someone has to say it. It's really hard to run a company. 
Um, like everyone is very optimistic from this stage and then you start a company and then it's really hard. So I want to give you firepower. So think about growth hacking and the tools that I give you as a way of fighting back on the inevitable that most businesses fail. So growth hacking is the reason LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter can grow absolutely massive with no traditional marketing spend. So you can do a lot because people are addicted to their screens. If you get in front of them, you can have massive results. So we're going to talk about what growth hacking is, how to growth hack in real life and on social, uh, productivity, psychology, social news, lots and lots of different things. So the golden rules of GOF, it should be scalable, repeatable, and predictable. So whatever you're doing, it needs to be able to do it over and over with predictable results. So a lot of people are getting rich off Facebook ads right now. If you can arbitrage enough traffic to your website and it makes you more money than it costs to get that traffic in and convert, then all you have to do is scale that up and then you have uh, unlimited traffic and you make money all day. Uh, a lot of other people are using SEO. As long as you can get enough searches to your website, that will convert. I love Twitter and Instagram. They're both free channels. You don't have to pay to use them. And there's 200 million people on both those platforms. So it's really easy to get a lot of traffic that way. So when we talk about golden rules of growth, the first one that everyone needs to remember, you do not talk about growth hacking. So by this, I mean when you find a growth hack that works, don't tell other people about it. You want to keep that traffic to yourself. Whatever it takes in order for you to have that cookie that only you can eat, as soon as other marketers know about it, it's over. As such, the second rule of growth hacking is you do not talk about growth hacking. When investors ask how are you getting all the traffic, be obtuse. Say, we must be doing something people like. Everyone wants to believe in magic. So if you can find a way of getting that traffic um, and not revealing it, that's magic. Speak to customers and define your messaging before you go viral. For most companies, it's not clear what you do. It's not clear how to sign up. It's not clear what you'll get in return. So always have a very good landing page. So as such, you need to understand the basics of user experience. So I can go through most of this in 90 seconds if someone wants to time me. Does anyone have an iPhone? Yeah? Okay. So I want you to time me and then Shout as loud as you can if I go over. Let me know when to start. <laughs> Alright, this is taylorbrands.com. Design unlimited logos for free. This is uxmiths.com. Mobile simple. Um, mobile users are distracted. Not always true. This is balsamic. Don't pay a developer. Use this and then hire give that to any developer and he can create it. Keep your sign up really simple. Don't have email and sign in. Just get that button, get them using it and get the stuff later. Keep your onboarding really easy. Automatically log them in after sign up and always send a personal email asking them how they found your site so you know which marketing channel works. This is a checklist via GitHub. The last slide has my email on it and I'll send the slides to everyone who emails. These are the best call to action buttons of all time. Sign up will get the best conversion. Then download free. Then start with your free forever account. Then get started. And if your product's more complex, you need a how it works button. This is crazy egg. This shows where people hover their mouse on the screen so you can see what they're thinking about clicking and design the site around that. Optimizely helps you split test different messages so you can see which one works better. This is a website launch checklist you should go through before you go live. And Qualaroo tells you why people do things on your site through little pop-ups. So why have you left something in the basket? Is it clear what to do on our website? Five users will find 85% of your user experience issues. So always test every time you do a redesign. And this is bestaboutpages.com if you've never designed an about page before. Did I do it? Eight seconds left. All right. <laughs> um, I coach a lot of entrepreneurs and they always say, we have loads of ways we can get traffic. What should we do? And the answer is we start with the easiest one, which will get you the most feedback the quickest. So if you have a big email list, go hard on that. If you know a lot of influencers, start there. So whatever it is that will get you the most results, do that. You'll get traction, you'll get momentum, and you can bake that learning into your product as it grows. Your goals for your company and for growth hacking should be smart. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. We want to grow our company is a terrible goal. We're going to get 5,000 more users in the next five weeks is much better. 
It's measurable, you either did it or you didn't, and it has a timestamp. So this is how you measure that. So this is a line by line on how you can get users. So for instance, we're going to reach out to 10,000 people on Twitter and expect 25% to convert. We're gonna do paid ads on Facebook, paid shout outs on Instagram. We're gonna fly at every co-working space in Jersey and New York. We're gonna have a viral factor. Everyone who uses our company is gonna invite two people. PR, we're going to reach out to 50 blogs and expect 5 to 10 to convert. Events, we're going to organize a monthly meetup, 100 people will attend, 50% will convert. If you do this line by line, you'll be 90% ahead of most other startups. If you ask anyone who runs a company, how are you going to get traffic, how are you going to get users, no one can really ever answer comprehensively. So if you have something like this, it's really impressive when you meet investors, mentors, partners, when you're trying to hire people. Sam Altman of Y Combinator said, when in entrepreneur says to me, this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it, I pretty much get out my checkbook straight away. Read the basics for your channel on growthhackers.com. It's an innovative marketing website with the latest case studies for SEO, content marketing, YouTube and so on, so that you can get up to the minute info on how to game the Facebook algorithm and so on. It's a much better place to waste your time than Facebook. Don't worry too much about the small things on day one. Like, Don't worry about how your site looks or where the buttons are. You just need traffic. If you look at any of the big sites, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, their first versions looked horrible, but they focus on traffic. When you have traffic, it's really easy to optimize and get the conversion up. But when you don't have traffic, it's very hard to turn it on. Copy is really important. This is my friend's events app. Not a lot of people know. You can put absolutely anything you want in the app update, and Apple will OK it. So they put, here's what's in the newest version of our app, more ads. We've crammed hundreds of ads into this version as we know how much you love them. We've worked hard to ensure they pop up regularly, so if you miss one, you'll get another chance to see it. <laughs> People will remember that. This is another one. Rather than just having your first name, when they do an email, they'll do something like, all right, Bradley, you hot little sugar muffin. People will want to read that and read on. This is my favorite of theirs. The entire email, every word is written backwards. So it's really hard to get from top to bottom. But because of that, you definitely will. And you definitely will open them the next week. When most people stop using a product or service, the company leaves them alone. This is wrong because it's 10 times harder to get a new client than it is to retain an old one. So the founder of this company has taken a picture of himself looking very sad with a sign that says, please come back. And then they time it. If someone hasn't logged into the app for three, four, five weeks, they automatically get sent this. Be a mixture of madmen and mathmen. Madmen, they take massive risks for their clients, but they deliver massive rewards. And mathmen, everything should be measured. This is Store Maven. This helps you A B test App Store copy. Over 50% of app discovery happens within the App Store. It doesn't happen through news or on Facebook. People are browsing the App Store all day for new apps. If anyone's doing an app and they said, which one channel should I focus on? App Store optimization. So you can A-B test the picture and the text. This is App Tweak. You can get optimization reports, monitor your competitors, find the best keywords, and analyze your reviews and ratings. This, again, will massively increase the number of app downloads you have. This is a marketing stack that will cost $9 for the whole thing. Segment is all your customer data in one place. Google Analytics shows who's on your website, where that traffic came from, what your most popular pages are. Mixed Panel enables you to tag users so you can see how many people got all the way through our online shop but left something in the basket. How many people have not logged into our app for the last five weeks. Optimizely helps you split test different messages. Scrollbox enables you to capture emails. And perfect audience is retargeting pixels. So if someone lands on your website but they don't convert, you can have banners that follow them around the web. Also, the first thing you need to do when you start a website is start a Facebook page for your company and get the retargeting pixel for that. Then everyone who's seen your website, you can target on Facebook. Pour more resources into the ones that work. So if you have two or three channels, find the one that's working the best and hammer that until it doesn't work anymore. Rinse and repeat. I give this talk a lot in Europe and I normally tell people to think like the Americans. But now I'm in America. So what do I mean by that? I mean have an aggressive winning at all costs mentality. All big American startups are built off the backs of spam. 
Airbnb, if you posted something on Airbnb, they would cross post it to Craigslist in the early days. Craigslist had loads of traffic. So if you're looking for an apartment in Craigslist, you'd see the ad and click out to Airbnb and vice versa. BuzzFeed ripped off Reddit, Imja, and Tumblr for thousands of articles on their way up, creating spammy content around pictures. Um, they need to get the traffic in order to get the investment, and now they do quality content, quality journalism, and it wouldn't surprise me if they win a Pulitzer. But they had to do the spam in order to get the money, in order to do the good stuff. Finally, Genius is a lyrics website. 2% um, of all Google searches are for lyrics, so their acquisition source was SEO, but they got caught by Google asking bloggers to link to them over other platforms. This is against Google's rules, so they went from page one for virtually every song to absolutely nowhere. But by this stage, they had like $20 million of investment because of all the traffic, so they presumably called up the CEO of Google and said, we're sorry, because they were back on within three weeks. My point is, once you're rich, you can delete your past. <laughs> In short, go and get your users and customers from other platforms. So I like to think of it like this. If you have a milkshake, and I have a milkshake, and I have a long straw which stretches all the way across the room and into your milkshake, then I can drink your milkshake. I can get your users. So how do I do that? This is similar web. You can go on here and find how much web traffic any website on the internet gets. It's like 80% accurate. So you can see, is it worth writing for this blog? Is my competitor getting a lot of traffic? You can also see where that traffic comes from. So if you have a lot of Reddit, a lot of Imja, a lot of Tumblr, a lot of Facebook traffic, all you need to do is tap their company name into those platforms and see what they're doing. Uh, one easy way to do good Facebook ads is to look at your competitors' Facebook ads, see how they're converting. If they have a lot of likes and engagement, just copy the layout and use it for your ads. And you drink their milkshake. Another way is through web scraping. This is import.io. This will enable you to scrape websites and doesn't require any code to do. A friend of mine runs a DHL competitor, so he wants to deliver boxes uh, cheaper than DHL. So all week, he just scrapes Amazon, eBay, all those delivery sites, just reaches out to them and says, hey, I'm going to give you delivery cheaper than anyone else. Want to give it a try? Thousands of dollars made every week. I think he just raised a big round of money. And that's the only acquisition source he does. Scraping works at scale, so you can do a hell of a lot of it. Appifier is another way of scraping data. So find out where your competitors are and go and scrape the data and go after them. If you're creating a HomeJoy clone, you could look up cleaners, electrician, plumbers, find all the platforms they're on, scrape that data, and then use that against them, and you drink their milkshake. Um, so to really ram this point home, you ever see a new app and it looks horrible, but it's top of the app store. Five star ratings, lots of two word reviews. I like app, awesome app, this app cool. This is how they do it. So this is someone in China with about 75 iPhones in front of her and she is giving everything a five star review and writing a two word review as per to make it look real. So you can buy your way to the top of the app store. Um, it costs about $70,000 through dark web channels. And if you get into the top 10 for a paid app, you will make money for life. So it is worth doing. My point is people are doing this right now. You need to be aware of it. Other frauds that are happening right now, ad fraud. Um, no one can really tell fake traffic. So a lot of those websites that make money from those banner ads, they are buying fake traffic monetizing it through the banner ads um, and no one knows any better. Click fraud, AdWords, if people click on the links on your website, you get a few dollars from AdWords. So there are groups of people who are in these secret Facebook groups and they say, refresh my page until the banking ad comes up then click on my AdWords link, I'll do the same to you and they're making money from that. Copyright fraud, YouTube has excellent copyright protection. If you upload someone else's music video, it will notify them and say, do you want to take this down or do you want to make money from it? Facebook doesn't really have that. It's just introduced it now, but people are building massive video pages off the back of copyright fraud. Um, so if you want to build a big video page, I'm not saying you should, but right now would be a good time. Uh, influencer networks. You see all those basic white girl posts about teenage girls uh, texting and falling in love. They are run by young teenage boys. 
There's a ring of them, and they have millions of followers, and they retweet each other to grow new accounts, and then they make money from app companies. Next time you see an app trending on Twitter, look at the people sharing it. It's almost always fake girls with 300 followers, um, and all their tweets look fake. Um, so there's an entire industry in faking it to the top. So I'm not saying you should do any of this, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is the typical growth engine for an app or any company. Firstly, there's awareness. Someone tells you about you see an ad. Then you download, you activate it, you share it with your friends, and then they find out about it. We're going to focus here today because it's the hardest one, but I find most young app companies don't understand how important it is to share. Um, if a thousand people download your app, only a hundred people will ever use it after the first week. So if that hundred are not sharing it with their friends, it's a very long road to make anything happen. This is an amazing contraption called Sumo Me. It's free for the most part. And if you move your mouse, you're about to leave the screen, you get a pop-up. So you can help to capture that email. So the two best call to actions, if you're selling something, 10% off anything in store if you download our newsletter. Or if you're not selling something, a very good piece of content. The 10 things everyone does wrong in our industry, 10 ways to be better at what you do in our industry. Um, and then that's a good reason to get the email. Also, if you do written content, Sumo Me has this widget with sharing, which will encourage people to share the social. Sumo Me requires no code. It slots right into WordPress. This is the secret formula to getting returning users. So firstly, there's a hook. So someone tells you about the product. So there's an external hook that drags you in. Then you take an action. You get a reward such as content. Then you invest time. And then there's an internal trigger which drags you in. Some of you went on Facebook and Pinterest today. They did not need to advert it to you to get you there. There was an internal hook in your head which says, I feel a bit bored. I'm going to go on there. You need to create that hook for your company because it costs too much money to advertise people to bring them back. So once you have that hook, so let's say you're a blogger, are you writing every day so people come back? Is there a reason that people think of you every day? Can you do it through app notifications in the time being? But eventually people need to be thinking about using your product all the time. You might have noticed when you join LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, your email gets blown up until you turn notifications off. That's because People forget that they've signed up to most things. So you have to keep emailing them to remind them. So this is Mandrill by MailChimp. This can automate all of that. This can email all of your users on their birthday if they're not logged in for two months, if they left something in the basket. So complete automation of dragging people back to your website all the time so you can cut the number of people who churn out. There's millions of ways of acquiring users because people go to work and they don't want to do any work. So if you get in front of them on that screen, there's a good chance they'll convert. So generally, you have no idea what you're doing. Um, so Clarity.fm can help you with that. Clarity.fm, you can speak to experts. It's not cheap. It's $1 to $25 per minute. But let's say you wanted to do email marketing. You could read some blogs and try and work it out. Or you could pay someone who sold $10 million worth of stuff. You can say, right, how do I grow my list at 2,000 people a week? Which email provider do I use? Uh, how do I make sure my emails get open and so on? And they can give you fast answers. So you're swapping money for time, but time is really the only advantage you have as a young company. So I'm about to go through some real fun stuff, and you all are going to be excited. But first, don't try and scale until you have a good product. So you know you have a good product by using Net Promoter Score. That's asking people how likely are they that they would recommend your product to a friend. If it's 0 to 6, it's negative. 7 to 8 is neutral. 9 to 10 is positive. You want to get mainly 9 to 10s, and that has to improve every month. Then ask them what's the main benefit of your product. This is because that should be what the one-liner on your site is. Someone says, I like it for this reason. That's a great one-liner. Finally, if our product went away tomorrow, how disappointed would you be? And if 40% say very disappointed, that's time to scale. There are lots of ways of acquiring users, everything from affiliate programs, trade shows, offline events. I'm going to go through social media, email, and real life, because pretty much any company can use them. I'm doing a webinar on content marketing soon, if anyone's interested. Uh, I'm actually giving a talk in New York tomorrow on how to do a successful Kickstarter. Um, give me a shout at the end or email me, and I'll send you a tip. So should you have an email list or should you just launch? The answer is always have an email list. The default state is people do not care about what you're doing. So let me tell you about the most boring company of all time. They're called Mint. They're a personal banking app. They're like, don't spend too much money. You should be saving. 
but they had one of the most viral pre-launch campaigns ever. Nine months of written content. So they had top finance bloggers that you could write in and ask them questions for. So all of that traffic from sharing it to their networks. To get Mint first, bloggers put an I want Mint button on their blog, which gave them SEO juice. They put an email box at the end of every blog post. This alone acquired 20,000 to 30,000 users. So they were doing one week of P PR every two months. In the end, they got acquired within two years, and it was a super viral product. But they did very obvious things that any company can do. So if a banking app can be viral, yours can too. So people ask us, um, how did we raise $85,000 on Kickstarter uh, when we've never done it before? So there's lots to our secret source, like every company has a secret source, but I would say using a viral waiting list was the bit, one of the biggest keys. So normally when someone signs up to something, you bring them to a landing page and you say, uh, we'll let you know when we go live, thank you. That's the wrong way to do it because people are excited about your product and you just shut the door on them. With a viral waiting list, you send them to a landing page and then they sign up and then they say, you're in 500th place to get to the top of the queue like us on Facebook, share this on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, invite all your friends by email. By doing this, you get the people most hyped about you to share it with their friends and do the marketing for you. The whole point of all of this is that you don't do the marketing, the users do. So you put prizes at the top. So ours were free consultancy, we'll write a blog post, free webinars. So we had all of these things and we had people battling it out, which meant that we only launched this three weeks before our Kickstarter went live. Like we decided to do it at the last minute. We had 2,300 people in the queue on launch day. So it was just a case of all the people who had been excited about our Kickstarter and were battling it out. We said, great, the book's live, made like $15,000 on the first day. So if you haven't launched yet, use this. And then at the top, you can have free products or whatever it is, you can put the prizes at the top. So we used QAT, Q-U-E-U-E-A-T.com, uh, but that's not quite available for public. So my friends at matraapp.co, uh, that does pretty much the same thing. And if you use my code, you get 25% off. Real life is really underrated. Everyone wants to watch things go viral on Facebook, but that almost never happens. Go where your users are in real life and speak to them and convert them there. So my friends who run the events app, they printed out letters saying, we all quit our jobs to start this company. If you like going out in London, download the app and let us know what you think. They put it in envelopes and they stood in a railway station in East London every morning for three weeks, giving them to everyone who passed through the station because they presumed everyone going to work would want to go out after. They got thousands of downloads. They met mentors, partners, investors, and that's time they would have otherwise just spent drinking coffee in the morning. So think about where you can go in real life and just hammer your people. Some of this can be done online. This is a, a program called Slack. It's meant to be an email um, so people don't send emails to each other all day. But I found that most companies who use this, the developers just sit around chatting to each other all day on it. So this is a list of 190 public Slack communities that you can tap into and get early feedback, early clicks, you know, early ideas about the design of your product, and people love to be first on these communities. Uh, Meetup and Eventbrite as well. Uh, if you're running an agency, so you have a few people who pay you a lot of money, or you're looking to get the word out at the very start, become a public speaker. So Meetup and Eventbrite, go on there, search your niche, find the active Meetup groups, and then all send them the same message to all of them as a private message. I'm a big fan of your meetup. Uh, I give a talk on 10 things everyone does wrong in our industry. Can I come and give a talk at your meetup? I've got a massive network I can invite. Just say that, they never check. And then copy and paste and send that to everyone and one in four will get back to you. This is everyone's favorite slide in my deck. What is the big sports team in New Jersey? Giants, okay. So this is Charlie app. So put in anyone's email address and this will pull all of the public information about them on the internet. All their blog posts, all their LinkedIn, all their company news. So I could have a meeting with someone in New Jersey and go, oh, I love the sports team, New Jersey Giants. And they'll be like, wow, that's my team. I don't really love the Giants. I just saw that they did and used it against them. Also, pro tip, if you go on dates, you say, oh, can I send you a calendar invite for the date? And the girl goes, oh, that's kooky, okay. And then you use that on her as well, and then you find out what she's into. <laughs> All right, email hunter. 
Type in any company's web address and it finds all the public email addresses of people who work there. So you can, if you want to sell to a company and you don't know where to begin, this is a very good place to start. Norbert will find anyone's email address in the world. You just need their first name, their last name and their company domain. It's 10 bucks for one day, but worth doing. Mailtester.com to test the emails to check that they're, the, they're the right ones. Uh, Discover.ly, go on anyone's LinkedIn profile and it will show you all the Facebook friends you have in common or go on anyone's uh, Twitter or all the LinkedIn connections you have in common. Also works within your email. So generally speaking, um, if you only want to get to 20, 30 people, don't cold email. It, the response rate is just too low. Always get warm intros where possible. Cold emailing only really works if you're sending to thousands of people and 2% convert. So generally speaking, um, Entrepreneurs, or certainly British entrepreneurs, are a bit scared of using the phone, but you have to be good at using the phone. The more comfortable you are with it, the better your company gets. So as an exercise, try a brain drain. So call up one of your competitors pretending to be a customer, ask them about all of their features and all the features they're going to build in the next six months and steal their ideas. It's vaguely ethical, but uh, you know, this is America. right? Social media, uh, these are the latest stats. Facebook has 1.7 billion. It's not dying, it's not going anywhere. Instagram has 500 million. Twitter still has 300 million. Snapchat has 100. Um, there's a conspiracy amongst social media practitioners like me who will tell you the way to be good at social media is authentic content, a good voice, and posting consistently. The reason we keep telling you that is because you try it, you don't get any new followers, any new clicks, and then you have to hire us and pay us lots of money. Um, it's one of the biggest scams. So that's not how you get big on social. You get big on social by being aggressive. Follow lots of people, reach out to lots of people, reply to people, pay people for shout outs. You have to be out there hustling. For whatever platform you're trying to grow, it doesn't matter what you post as content until you get past 3,000 followers. Like you could be doing everything right, but you just won't get the likes and shares. Another problem, people don't care about you and they definitely don't care about your product. So if you post office selfies and alcohol Fridays, no one cares. Uh, I'd go so far as to say, and this is controversial, if you're not good looking, no pictures of the founding team. It's just not good content. You want to make people feel good, so you need good content, good pictures, videos, interviews. It's really hard to find that stuff, so my advice is to steal it. This is something I found on Facebook and brought across to Twitter. Uh, I was the first one to get it there, and it went viral, lots of retweets, lots of likes. So much so that my name started trending in London and Melbourne, Australia. So I got a whole heap of followers and interactions for something I didn't create, but it still felt good. Um, this is welcome to the internet. If you don't know where to find viral content, this scrapes the web for the most fun stuff that's trending right now. Pretty much always brand safe, so any company can use it. It's a page on Facebook you can find. This is Razit.com. It's a viral content aggregator. So you just tap in your keyword, so New Jersey, finance, fashion, New York, whatever, and it will find you everything that's trending on Facebook and Twitter right now. So whether you want videos, pictures, or text, you just tell it and it finds it. So really, really handy for getting viral content. Snipply, when you share stuff, not just to your own site, but to BuzzFeed, Wall Street Journal, anywhere, it injects a little pop-up right here. So you can put an ad to your site or you can have an email box to collect emails. So you can get remnant clicks even when you're not sharing to your own site. This is how Facebook chooses what to show in your newsfeed. Are you interesting? Not so much. Do people generally like, share and comment on your posts? They do. That's good. That, if you have a lot of likes, shares and comments, Facebook likes you. If you're getting zero engagement, you need to stop what you're doing. The more likes, shares, and comments you get, generally Facebook will share your stuff. So that's the first thing you need to have. You need to be interesting. Secondly, the type of post. Facebook loves whatever it's introduced most recently, so it loves live video. So if you can do live video, that will get shown to the most people connected to you. Then normal video, beneath that text and photo, and finally external link. It's always hated external link because that causes people to leave Facebook. Um, on a side note, the age of blogging is dead. If you want to keep a blog, just copy and paste the entire thing into Facebook. Um, your distribu distribution system is your own page and into groups. 
Finally, recency is the area you have the most control over. What you want to do is get as many likes and followers in the first 10 minutes. So you might have noticed when it's been a baby or a wedding, it's glued to the top of your feed. That's because as soon as it goes up, lots of people like and comment, so the algorithm goes crazy. So get everyone in your office to like and comment on your page and share it. Basically, your content needs to be as good as a baby or a wedding. If you can't get that, then uh, I don't know. Thunderclap is another cool thing we did for our Kickstarter. So Thunderclap is you write a status update and then you invite people to come to the page and then they click OK. And at a certain date and time, everyone who's agreed to share that shares it to their Facebook or Twitter at the same time. So we had an audience of 335,000 for our Kickstarter when it launched. So in the hour that that Thunderclap was going around Facebook, we made like $3,000, $4,000. So because... When Facebook sees a lot of people sharing a link at the same time, it thinks something's going viral. So if you can get your friends to do that or do a thunderclap, that's amazing. Instagram is the best place to find new users and customers right now. What you want to do is find the one person who absolutely loves what you're doing, follow all of their followers, and then look at the hashtags those followers use and use those in your posts. So let's say you're selling ties. Uh, don't use the hashtag fashion. A million people use it every day. You won't get anywhere near it. You want to use artisan ties or handmade fashion or some small hashtag that not a lot of people are using. The reason is you want to rank for a hashtag. So you rank for a hashtag if enough people like your post in the first 15 minutes and then anyone else searching for that hashtag will see your post at the top. Traffic from Instagram. Traffic from Instagram shows up as direct, which is the muddiest sort of traffic on Google Analytics. So direct is anything that clicked through from an app, anything from an untagged email, anyone browsing privately. So it's a big mess. So you can't put posts, you can't put links in posts, but you can essentially put one link on your bio, which you can change at any time. If you want to put that link to your homepage, don't put it to your main homepage.com. Put it to a custom page, which maybe looks exactly the same. So yourdomain.com forward slash go and put that link on Instagram. Then you know that everyone who hits that page has come from Instagram. So don't share that link anywhere else. So um, GIFs and content. So the easiest way of finding content is to see what other people have written. If it resonates with you, share it on your feeds. So memes, I find, are the easiest way of communicating with people, and they're pretty harmless, and they work for anything. So this meme, this lady has her dog in the front seat and husband in the back. When you're trying to eat your flatmate's food without them noticing. My dream, my reality. They're so easy to do, and there's many, many accounts which post these all day. This is the anatomy of a good Instagram post. So this is Founder Magazine. They went from zero to 110,000 followers in six months. They have stolen an image, given a tiny credit, put an inspirational quote. And what they've done over here is the most interesting part. So not a lot of people know. You can reply to your own post and drop as many hashtags as you want in. And they'll all rank as long as you put them in the first 10 minutes. So they've done everything from businesswoman, grind, magazine, quote of the day. So the reason they've done so many is they know that they'll rank for two or three of them. They also done the classic double tap if you agree. The two best posts for engagement on Instagram, double tap if you X and tag someone who Y. So double tap if you're going to crush it this week. Tag someone who's an awesome entrepreneur. These are the things that will get people into that early loop. And as ever, you need those first 3,000 followers to make that happen. So audience is a quick way of finding influencers. So it is a free software which you can run on your desktop or mobile. So you can put in your Instagram account and then search by keywords. You can search people's Instagram bios. So let's say fashion is your niche. You would just put in the word fashion, uh, whether they're a boy or a girl, company or person, and then you can search by how many followers they have. So I find beneath 10,000 followers not influential enough. Over 50,000 tends to be too expensive or they're signed to an agency. Uh, if you're not selling something like a startup, then offer them 50 to 75 bucks to do a post and make sure their engagement's good. If you're an affiliate, who's the people doing the sex toys company out here? What's it called? Peep Show Toys. So if you're selling something, what you want to do is find 
an affiliate who will happily post for you and give them as much money as possible. So in our book, we talk about um, someone who sells WordPress widgets for $75 each. Every affiliate who brings him a sale, he gives them $75. So he makes $0 on every sale that comes in. But because of that, he gets their email address. And someone who has bought something is 10 times more likely to buy it than someone who hasn't. So he now has 5 million emails and one in every 750 emails he sends is a sale. So building the sex toy business, it's an email game. Get people's emails and you win their hearts. Right, canva.com. This is what you need to use if you're not a designer and you want to create cool flyers or Facebook back image or Pinterest logo. So really, really good for creating that. If you take photos of things, TextQt will put pictures and cool words over the top. If you want to send your Instagram post later, Hootsuite, Buffergram, Buffer or later.com. I think later.com is the best for that. And Webster.me will help you find hashtags. Twitter is my favorite social network. There's so many ways of getting at someone. You can follow, favorite, retweet, add to a list, reply. That's five more ways you can get at someone than on Facebook. And it's accepted that people who don't know each other will talk on Twitter. Don't worry about hashtags. No one uses them, unlike Instagram. And Twitter's not about mountains of traffic like Facebook is, if you get it right. Twitter's about finding five or six people every day who absolutely love what you do. And this can include B2B, so making large sales. Audience, again, the best Twitter tool of all time. You can search by gender, job title, location, whether they're a company or person, whether they've tweeted in the last 15 days. Every single person on Twitter is indexed on audience. So let's say you were targeting artists or artist in New York. You would put that in and it brings up all of those people. So you can follow from here. You can tweet to them from here. You can add them to a list. You can export to Excel on the paid plan, which is only like 30 bucks a month. So if you were targeting artists right now, that would bring up 1.2 million people. So this is normally the first place my agency goes. A startup comes to us and says they want users, they want traffic. We normally go here, find people who are going to love what they're doing and start reaching out to those people. Um, it's never spam if you're adding value. If you're a musician um, and a platform that helps musicians get paid gigs reaches out to you, what are you going to say? No, don't talk to me. You're going to say, great, I, I need help. So if you're really solving a problem for a group of people, they're going to love you. One of the golden rules of the internet, people generally follow back. So using something like Tweepy, you can put in your competitor's Twitter account, follow all of their newest followers, and even if you do this badly, about one or two out of 10 will follow back. So if you do that across four accounts, so company info, company USA, company team, company help, then you can start to add up all of those followers and get something approaching good free traffic. Don't follow more than 50 to 100 people a day for the first month, 100, 200 second month, 200, 300 third month, 300 to 500 a day after that. Steal the good stuff. Only retweet when someone compliments you. Tweet the same article five times a week. You'll probably do it five times a day. No one will notice. We were tweeting 300 times per day per account when we were running 10 magazines. 5% of people were unfollowing. The other 95% were clicking tens of thousands of things. NinjaOutreach.com will help you find influencers. You just tap in your niche, uh, and is it Instagram or Twitter you're reaching on, and it will find all the people who have good followings there. On Analytica, if you do written content, just copy and paste your article in, and it will scan it for keywords, and will then say you should reach out to this person, they've been talking about your niche recently, and then you can start to get shout outs that way. Famebit is a real-time bidding auction for YouTube stars. So if you want people on YouTube to advertise you, which is a good idea, they often have really good engagement. So you just say, uh, I have $150. Um, I'd like someone to talk about my shoes or whatever. And they will find those people and then they will bid for it and get to talk about your product. LinkedIn, if you're in a serious niche like finance or investing or recruitment, then LinkedIn has actually got a good place for traffic. So what you want to do is find the groups that do send traffic. And once you've joined 50 of them, if you use this link here, you can spray your link to 50 groups uh, in 30 seconds. So if you're in that serious niche, it's worth spending a bit of time trying to find that. How to get your first 500 users. So I give this talk all over the world and people come up to me and they're like, I have a new startup idea. And I'm like, oh, okay, so what? And then some people come up to me and they say, I have a startup idea, we've already got 500 users. Oh, okay, now you have my attention. It's such a big gulf and anyone can get those 500 users. 
So if you have zero, you have to hustle and get them. And this is how anyone can get them. Message all of your LinkedIn contacts in batches of 20 saying, I'm working on this, would love a download. Individually message all of your Facebook friends as a private message. Tweet out all your Twitter followers one by one and email all of your contacts one by one. Your friends and family love you more than anyone. Uh, so they're the people most likely to say, okay, I'll try your product. Okay, I'll refer you. I'll go and find you a customer. So if you can't ask them, you are not cut out to be an entrepreneur. Go and do another job. There's lots of them out there. Um, because every day you're going to have to be asking people to do things that they don't want to do or they didn't know they want to do. So start by getting your friends and family in. And if you're thinking, these aren't my ideal users, that's fine. These are the people who tell you your blog has spelling mistakes on it. Your app doesn't really work. How do I sign up? What am I meant to do? So they'll iron out all the creases. Then you go to your real users, and rather than saying, please be the first on, you can say, we already have 500 users. You should get on before we get too big. Um, no one knows anything about social media. Um, so I see companies hiring social media people. Uh, these kids don't know what they're doing. So if you do this, you are doing 90% of what a social media person does, and you don't have to buy them the seat in your office. So you're going to block out every 9 o'clock to midnight on a Sunday night, and you want to do four money posts a week. A money post is when you ask for something. Come to my event, check out my new product, check out my website. Um, what does everyone think of my new design? You do a money post at 10 a.m., and you want to use Buffer software. Buffer um, will enable you to post to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Google Plus at the same time. The reason you do it at 10 a.m. is people go to work at 9 a.m., they pretend to work for an hour, and then they go on Facebook all day. So if you get them at 10 o'clock and they're thinking, oh, this is vaguely work-related, they're going to click on it, they're going to like it. The second most important post of the day is at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock when people are fed up and they're thinking about they have to get the path home or whatever. Um, so you want to grab them and give them something fun. So fun content at 5 or 6 o'clock to give them a lift. The reason you do that is fun content always gets likes and comments, so your page rank will be good on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, so they're much more likely to see your money posts in the morning. So those are the two most important posts of the day. Other than that, send a few tweets in between. Get your peripheral networks on a Sunday night too, so Instagram, Pinterest, all of that, and also write your mail out on a Sunday night. You want to leave it to the day it goes out, but then there's an emergency and it never gets done. So if you do that, then you can do the fun stuff, which is just logging in once a day and replying to things. And that is 90% of what any social media person would do. Converting all of this into gold, email is 40 times more effective than Facebook and Twitter combined. Some of us built big Facebook pages. Now we find out only 2% of people who've liked that page will see our posts unless we pay. Some of us built big Instagram and Twitter pages. It used to be chronological. Uh, if someone was looking at their feed when you posted, they'd see it. Now the default view is, while you were away, what got the most likes? That is always going to be Kim Kardashian or memes. It is never going to be your business news. This will help you capture emails. The emails are so critical. So this is Hello Bar. So you want to put one of those two call to actions, 10% off, or we've written an ebook on how to get more clients. This will sit at the top of your site. Like a lot of the things I talk about tonight, you don't think they'll work until you try them, and then you're like, wow, people are actually giving us their email. MailChimp is the industry standard. If you've never written a mailing list and you want to get up and running really quickly, in one hour, anyone could learn to use this. Kickbox will get rid of your broken email addresses. So it's important because if you have a lot of broken email addresses, you head to the spam bin quicker. So if someone's misspelled or someone's left the company, you want to get rid of those emails before you do your mail outs. Email your mail out to mail-tester.com and this will test whether it looks spammy before you send it out to everyone. So is there too many exclamation marks? Are there too many links? Does it look unnatural? Have you used the word Viagra? Anything like that. Reallygoodemails.com, you can look at companies like Uber and Lyft and how they do their emails that convert really highly, so you can copy that. Stocksnap and Pixabay will enable you to have thousands of photos that are completely copyright free and very high quality. So you can just tap in your keyword, gorilla, lion, zoo, Mercedes, whatever it is, and it will find you that content and you don't have to give any attribution to the photographer. Wavelength enables you to trade mailouts. So if you sell weightlifting weights and you sell that strange steroid powder that weightlifters eat, um, it would connect you because you have the exact same audience but you're not competing. So you can swap shout outs between your emails. 
Connect6 is another stalking tool. Go on anyone's Facebook profile and it shows you all the other networks they're on. So Quora, LinkedIn, Google+, but don't use that because no one does. <laughs> email tools. Sidekick enables you to see who opens and clicks your email. So I know sales teams who wait for people to open their email, then they call up the client and the client's like, oh, I just had your email open. And they're like, what a coincidence. Okay, well, let's start. Boomerang enables you to send your emails later. So if you don't want to speak to your boss all day, you can send them then. Or if you uh, want to pretend you get up early and do yoga, you can send them at half five in the morning. You should have two inboxes, one for Meetup and Eventbrite and all of your newsletters, and one for internal comms and client stuff. So Maelstrom will help you get to inbox zero. So it'll archive everything out of your Gmail inbox. So it's not deleted. You can still search for it. And it will also unsubscribe you from all the newsletters you don't want to be a part of. It's 10 bucks for one month, so use it, get to inbox zero, and then delete it. If you're the person who does sales in your company, this is Streak. It's a Google Chrome plugin. So when a client emails you or an investor emails you, tick the box, and they get added to this sales flow. So are they a lead? Have they been pitched? Are you negotiating? It's a really, really useful tool to keep on tap of what's happening and report back to your boss. Generally, when you start a company, you're lower in the power balance than whoever it is you are emailing. So you may email someone and they may not get back to you, but they should because you've spent time to create that email. So Rebump is a Gmail tool. If you email someone and they do not get back to you, Rebump will email them every four days forever. It'll be like, just thought I'd check you one more time, just checking you got it. An investor once said, there's a 98% chance I didn't see your email and a 2% chance I hate your guts. People want to be hustled. So this is quickmail.io. This is part of our secret source for our Kickstarter. We noticed our newsletters were landing in the promotions tab on Gmail. There's an old saying, if you want to bury a dead body, put it on the promotions tab on Gmail. No one ever looks there. Um, so we were like, what do we do? So we found our top 400 leads and got our poor intern to email them individually from a Gmail account. And then someone introduced me to this, uh, quickmail.io. So it sends all of your mail outs from your Gmail so that they will always land in the inbox. Like all Gmails from Gmail to Gmail land in the inbox. So use this. You're going to do 500 a day per account, but I think this would have way high deliverability than any other email provider. So chartgo.com will enable you to create really useful looking charts really quickly. So here's my secret for charts. I find they should go up and to the right. <laughs> if you're looking to get press, this is PR Press Hour. Just search your niche and it will find you the 15 to 20 publications that are really into that. So don't try and blast a thousand people. Just find the 15 or so publications that are really into what you're doing. Find the individual journalists and reach out to them. Hey Press will help you find any journalist in the world. You just need their first name or last name or their publication or their niche and it will tell you how to get in touch with them. Emojis increase engagement rates. So go to iemoji.com and you can copy and paste emojis anywhere you can type. The best use case is emails. No one expects to see an email in the subject line. It's not quite played out yet. So that will increase the number of people who open your emails. So GIFs. This is reactiongifs.com. You just type in the GIF that you want, uh, or, or I am happy, I am angry, I am disappointed, and it will help you find GIFs. You can also turn any YouTube video into a GIF by tapping in uh, the word GIF before YouTube. So www.gifyoutube.com. There's an app marketing strategy guide here for anyone who is building an app. And Typosaurus will find all the spelling errors on your website. Every website has one. This is Trello. It's a project management tool. Uh, really good for like what has to be done this week, who do I delegate it to, and then it has alarms if they do it late. It's also really good if you work on your own because no one has a manager. So this acts as your manager. So you create the cards, you can archive them, you can move them from column to column. So my columns are what's to be done this week, what's to be done today, and what am I waiting for feedback on? And if your what's to be done today is clear and your inbox zero, all your work is done. All of us stay up too late on our laptops and then we can't sleep. The reason for that is the bright light from your laptop, the blue light, 
imitates the sun, so our body thinks we're looking at the sun, and it's the reason we can stay up past two and not feel tired on our laptop. So Flux is a free product. It puts an orange hue on your screen, and that means you start to feel tired around midnight and sleep a lot better and a lot faster. Lean Domain Search will find all the available dot-coms in the world. So I was looking for God, and I found maingod.com, areagod, boldgod.com, all still available. So if God is still available, then your app idea probably is too. Anyone here looking for investment? No? Yeah? This is Investor List, the world's only open source investor list. So it, has, it tracks all the active investors and the niche they're in. So you can just put in your niche and find those investors and then find a warm intro to them. All great entrepreneurs read. These are the six books I would recommend all entrepreneurs read. The 48 Laws of Power is the best book ever written on practical human psychology. When I was on welfare and reading business books, this by far was the most practical, where I'd go to an investor meeting and I'd be like, oh, he's trying to do this to me, I'm going to do this in return. Have you ever gone for a job interview at a big company or you ever tried to raise money? Uh, the men, and it normally is men, play power games with you. So the 48 Laws of Power will help you to understand what those power games are and how you can play them yourself. So it has golden rules like conceal your intentions, say less, act like a sucker to catch a sucker, act like a king to be treated like one. So all the different modes you can have which will help you as you try and venture into the corridors of power. It also works, sadly, in personal relationships. How to win friends and influence people trains us out of our natural selfishness. So it's all about things we should do but none of us actually do. Things like listen, speak in the other person's interest, compliment the other person, never contradict, complain or condemn about the other person. So all these things that make the other person like you and they won't even realize why. An amazing book and companies are all about people. We think it's about tech and about building things, yes, but at some point there's a person at the other end, so you have to be good with people. Trust Me I'm Lying is the best book ever written on PR. PR can be hacked, but we don't really have time to talk about it. So in short, you need to go on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. There are people on there who will write anything on their blog for $5. You can literally send them your press release. So you want to get 15 to 20 of those up and then get all of the small industry blogs, create 10 fake Gmail addresses and email them saying everyone's talking about this. Now, internet journalism is all about theft. Someone writes something, someone else copies it and puts a link back, and they get a little extra traffic. So once you have the small industry blogs covering this, you can then take those fake email addresses and take those links and email Huffington Post and say, I can't believe you haven't covered this. Everyone's talking about it. Huffington Post have to write like 1,500 articles a day, so they don't want to miss anything that's going viral. So it, once you convince them, you can then go to AOL, CNN, and Forbes. It sounds far-fetched, but if you look up Trust Me, I'm Lying examples, a lot of companies have done it, so it is highly possible. Uh, it doesn't mean it's easy. You still need a great product and a great story, but it can happen. Zero to One is the best book ever written on startups, written by Peter Thiel, first investor in Facebook, and one of the founders of PayPal. So it contains his golden rules on building a company, which will probably make you cry. The things like, are you 10 times better than the nearest competitor? Are you building a monopoly so someone else can't join the uh, market? Do you have proprietary technology so someone with half a million dollars can't build your product in one month? If you can answer those questions, then you are ready for VC funding. The 4-Hour Work Week is the best book ever written if you want to travel around the world and work from your laptop. It contains golden rules like outsource everything to the Philippines. They're cheaper, $1 an hour, and speak perfect English. And Use your American Express gold card for everything, and because of this, you will get free air miles. The Hard Thing About Hard Things is the best book ever written on business management. Most business books are like, how to increase motivation, how to be more powerful in sales, how to be a good motivator. And they presume that uh, everything's going well when things are normally going really badly. So Hard Thing About Hard Things has chapters like how to fire someone what to do when you steal one of your competitor's employees and they're also your friend, how to have a review with a member of staff, how to tell a co-founder they're not pulling their weight. So it's this amazing practical book of the things that go wrong and also examples of how when you're scaling your team, things can go really badly. 
he was doing a project and the main developer said, look, uh, I know it's two weeks till we launch, but I just had a job offer from another company. It's only a little bit more money, but I'm going to leave unless you match it. So he needed that developer, so he went, go on then, I'll, I'll match it. Within one week, uh, the word got out that around the entire office, if you wanted a raise, just go and get an offer from a competing company, and the entire office did it at once. It nearly killed his company. So there's lots and lots of things that can go wrong, and this book goes through them. When I coach people, they always say the same thing. I don't have enough time. So I tell them this. Split your to-do list into things that directly make you money and things that don't, and then only do the side that directly make you money. You'll be surprised how much that second side can wait. Maybe it's content, social media, accounting, admin, legal. Just focus on building and selling product. Something I've started doing recently, having a board meeting with myself. So at a set time and day each week, I might put on a shirt and tie and be like, is everyone here? Yes. Start the meeting, um, and then you want to have only one goal on that. You either hit it or you haven't, so it has to be measurable, like traffic went up 15% this week. After a few weeks of doing this, you'll end up texting your friends, the board are going to be unhappy this week. And they're like, what? <laughs> um, I haven't talked about how to sell a company or how to raise millions of dollars because I haven't done either of those things. But plenty of people who give talks and write books will talk even though they've never run a company. Never take advice from someone who has not done the exact thing you're trying to do. Just focus on building and selling your product. Uh, it's much better to read autobiographies than blog posts, for instance. I'm looking to meet interesting startups, founders who are looking to grow their companies, people who've raised money, people looking to grow their social media, get more traffic. I'm looking to give more talks at conferences and meetups. Um, I'm looking to move to America next year, so be able to give a lot more keynotes and conferences there. Um, I have two more talks, one tomorrow morning in New York at half nine, uh, how to um, launch a Kickstarter, and one on Saturday, which is an extended version of this talk with more about user acquisition. Um, so yeah, so I'm open to new projects, um, anything revenue generating, uh, I'd like to give talks and I'd like to do consulting with people. I think I need a lift to the train station after too. Uh, my book, Secret Source, uh, I know I've gone really fast tonight to try and get this into 45 minutes. Is it even, am I over? Yeah, okay, I, I got three slides left. Um, so. This is my book, Secret Source. It's out now on Indiegogo, and it goes into every area, content marketing, social media, building a landing page, sales. Um, obviously, I speak a lot slower on the video course, um, and it's written words. So yeah, so if you're looking to do all of that, I generally advise people to learn it themselves. Um, it's quite hard to outsource growth hacking unless you have ser serious, significant funding. Um, so everyone in this room spends more time on Facebook each day than they do washing themselves. Um, and I think that's bad because Facebook is a load of random content you have no control over. So this is Stay Focused. It's a Google Chrome plugin. If you install it and you go on Facebook, it will physically cut you off after 10 minutes. So you cannot browse Facebook. You can't even put Facebook in the browser bar at the top. And yes, you can open a different browser, but you feel dirty doing it. So with all that time you spend not on Facebook, uh, you can start to do all of these growth hacks and start to grow your company. So it has been very nice to be here on my first ever Jersey talk. Uh, I normally end my talks by saying uh, thank you for being part of my American dream. But on this trip, um, where I've come back to a lot of the cities that I was in last time, um, I find people still being too slow. Um, and I have to do a hell of a lot to get my visa to be here. So understand that you're in the best country in the world, the best market in the world, you have the most opportunities in the world. So um, don't just sit there, um, make your company happen. Thank you. <laughs> Let's do a photo. I want everyone to raise their hands for a photo. What's the best way of getting everyone in it? All right, hold on. I want... What's, how are we going to get everyone in one shot?
All right. Uh, I'll take questions if anyone has any. The questions are, this is what my company does, um, and this is my marketing problem, so everyone else gets value. Yeah. When you're doing influencer outreach, is it going to give them money or free stuff? Uh, um, there's no right or wrong answer, but you'll be able to do more if you give them free stuff, I think. Where possible, do an affiliate and cut them as much money as possible. Uh, yeah. 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 Like yeah. Um, oh, firstly, my email, vincent at magnific.com. Email me and I'll send you the slides because uh, I know I went really fast. But that's my email. Podcasts, podcasts, blogging, video blogging, YouTubing, Snapchatting, it doesn't matter how you produce content. What matters is how you get traffic to it. How you, will you distribute the content? It doesn't matter. You could be better than Ellen, but if you don't have any distribution, it just won't matter. So you have to either build a community or find a way to get that into people. Uh, if you have a great personal network, you would grow your podcast by getting high-profile guests and then making sure they share it on Facebook and Twitter and their email list to get that initial traffic. Um, so you really got to work out the distribution more so what the content actually is. Uh, my book has a chapter, Eight Ways to Get Traffic to Your Content. Um, there are lots of ways of doing it. So you could have like eight different channels all giving a little bit of traffic. Yeah. I get, this is the number one question I get asked. If I have no money, what would I do? Um, so the, the free that you can get the quickest return from are Twitter, Facebook groups, and public speaking. Um, if you get good at those fast, then you'll get the most traffic. Uh, B2B sales is the same as what I do. Um, a few clients pay me thousands of dollars a month to consult with them, um, and that's public speaking. We, we don't do any other marketing. You just put on an event, uh, invite people via Twitter and Facebook groups, and then two or three of them will hire you. And then the rest of the room um, you know, gets to know who you are, might join your email list, might join your podcast, and will refer you to other people. So it's like a really good form of marketing. And B2B sales, it's quite hard to do all virtually. There normally has to be a little bit of face-to-face -face at the start. But yeah, public speaking, uh, 100%. Um, the only other, if you have less ethics, is Black Hat SEO works really well, but it's not easy to do. Black Hat SEO, where you outrank your competitors by any means necessary. They'll kill you if they find out, though. Yeah. Who is asking? Sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not leaving Facebook. Facebook is the best network. Everything for me starts on Facebook. What I've started doing is building Facebook groups. They're the last place you can get a lot of free traffic. Uh, I think that's, that's where everything's moving right now. Uh, I'm about to start Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube, but that's actually based on my model. Like Up to this minute, um, I run an agency where people do marketing. If anyone needs marketing, I'm happy to take it. But when I finish this tour, I'm moving slightly in a personal brand direction where I just do education, I do webinars, books. So teaching people like I have tonight, but on a more of a full-time scale. At the moment, I'm limited because I run an agency with a few other people. Um, but yeah, um, when I'm doing do B2B right now, so all I do is public speaking. But when you are growing your personal brand and you want a lot of people to pay a little, then you need to be everywhere. Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, so yeah, it depends on your model. For a lot of companies, they don't need to be on social media at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm working with a test prep company, like SAT, ACT, college, and stuff. And we're going to start a company next week to try to make something like almost free, like 2 dollars app called Really Good Test Prep. And so we're trying to get out of class as If it's a paid app, then as an acquisition source, read up on App Store optimization on websites like blackhatworld.com um, and then go all in on App Store optimization. If you get that right as an app, you don't have to do anything else. You barely need a website. Um, that would be the main thing I'd do. But what was the name of that app? Blackhatworld.com. 
it's a bit hard. It, it's an old forum, but it has up to date stuff on like Black Hat App Store optimization. Yeah. Not long. It, it only takes about 72 hours to become dangerous at anything. Um, this, yes, is like two or three years compressed. There's a lot of tools because I want people to come to my talks. Someone who runs a shop, someone who's building an app, uh, someone who's selling physical goods. They can all get something from it. So I'm not saying I use all of these tools. I just mean different people will see different things and go, ah, oh, yes, Instagram influencers, I didn't think of that, or great, uh, I can go to this sales meeting and I can get loads more emails. So that's why there's so many tools. Um, there's like a never-ending barrel. I just tried to pick the most useful ones that will get the most traffic. Um, yeah, if you want to learn it, you can. Just uh, try a few things and see what works. But don't hold on for too long. Like uh, I've held on to Twitter for too long and it, it's dying. But I love it. I get so much traffic from it. It's been my best channel for a long time. But um, yeah, find out what you like and then uh, hit it up. Yeah. We buy your book on Indiegogo or should we go somewhere else? Yeah, Indiegogo is the best place to get it. And then there's different packages. The no-brainer one has loads of free webinars, like on content marketing, sales, personal branding, things like that. Uh, that's the best place. The book will be, it, you get 70% of it now. It's completely finished in two weeks. Yeah. What's the biggest waste of time in terms of like what platform or website like just don't even bother? It's a good question. Oh, generally speaking, Snapchat. Oh, it's the biggest waste of time for small companies. Snapchat is great because it has big engagement and lots of impressions, which is great for brands who can afford to pay Snapchat seventy-five dollars for every thousand impressions or whatever it is. But yeah, small businesses need clicks. Um, clicks don't come from Snapchat. Clicks come from Facebook. After that, Twitter. Uh, after that, in the kind of way, Instagram. And then Snapchat. You, you just can't click. You can send a link in a DM, but it's very unwieldy. Snapchat's good, again, if you're good looking or building a personal brand or... Sex <laughs> uh, I could not comment. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so Snapchat is generally speaking the biggest waste of time, but um, for a lot more, more, I don't think a lot of companies are using Snapchat. It's just a strange media trend. But um, I think mo a lot of people are wasting time on social media. There's a good chance that many companies don't need to be on it at all. Like, outright. I'm going to steal the last question. I'm right here in front. Yeah. There you go. A year ago tonight, actually, was uh, Gary Vaynerchuk spoke here and you toe the line a little bit on the ethical stuff that he's all about value and doesn't really get into some of the black ops stuff you're talking yeah. about. I wonder what you think about his, you know, he pushes Snapchat in a much bigger way. I'm wondering what, you know, how you, how you feel about his methods versus yours. Can we turn the camera off? He's an investor in Snapchat. Not a lot of people know that. Um, I'm not saying he doesn't love Snapchat. I, I, I think he genuinely does. And I think Snapchat's a great platform. And I'm about to start using it. So I'm not saying Snapchat's a bad platform. But his business model's different to mine. Uh, his business model is he runs an agency and he gets big brands who don't know how to use social media to hire him. And Snapchat works with big brands really well. And uh, yes, there could be, there's going to be the odd example who have used Snapchat. But where are the Snapchat success stories? There's none. Every single day, there are literally millionaires being made on Facebook. Um, because if you can get that traffic lowered and you can sell it, you make money all day long from Facebook. So um, yeah, Snapchat is great, and I'm going to start using it. And its engagement is even higher than Instagram's. But uh, as someone who's been on welfare, I, I really hate bad advice to entrepreneurs where they waste their time. Um, and it's yes, it's possible to make Snapchat work. but. The likelihood is you, there's no discovery function. There's no way to grow your account. There's no way to get clicks. It's a very steep learning curve. In theory, any of us could get up tomorrow and go running every morning for a month and become really fit. But that learning curve is extremely steep. It's not likely we will. So there's a lot else you can do, which is great. And I, I, on so many things, I completely agree with Gary Vaynerchuk about hustling. He has lots of good ideas, um, but yeah. I, I just think Snapchat, not for not if you need clicks. How much Snapchat uh, for musicians? Yeah, so um, in one of my other decks, I do have five good use cases for Snapchat because I generally don't like to be negative. 
restaurants, local businesses. Um, so you can do a snap to the entire local area, just get their phone numbers and then snap them. Come in for two for one, drink, stuff like that. Brilliant for that. Um, anything nightlife related that can drag people in is really good. Um, musicians, yes. Um, I, I guess you can send them snaps of your tour and so on. Um, it depends if you have a teenage audience. But again, I, I, I'm still thinking about clicks. Unfortunately, we got to wrap up. Are you hanging out? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll hang out a All little right. bit. Yeah. How about a big round of applause for Vincent? Thank you. We're going to get a drink. I hope you're doing.